Hello everyone, it's Monthly Mailbag time again, and today we dive into the world of chemistry to look at some really interesting elements and compounds. One of my colleagues at one point when we were trying to convince the people in Sudbury that this was a benign, safe experiment, uh, went to the city council and drank a glass of heavy water to show that it's non-radioactive and perfectly safe. Of course, he, as he was drinking it, he poured a little bit of whiskey in it and said nothing improves the taste of heavy water like a little bit of teacher's, but that's... Uh, <laughs> Possum Verde was surprised by the story of someone having drunk a whole glass of heavy water. He asked, isn't it dangerous as well as expensive? Now, heavy water sounds scary, but it's actually not that dangerous. Hydrogen is the simplest atom in the universe. It's just a proton with an electron orbiting it. But sometimes a neutron gets squeezed in there, making a heavy version of hydrogen called deuterium. About one in every 6,000 hydrogen atoms in the world is deuterium, and it forms quite naturally. In very rare cases, though, another neutron can wedge its way in there to make tritium. But that's very unstable, and so that second neutron will pop out again. That means tritium is radioactive. You can make molecules like water with these special forms of hydrogen, and since the deuterium is heavier than normal hydrogen, we call the water made with deuterium heavy water. Here's the thing, though. The mass of a water molecule is dominated by the oxygen. Even if you double the weight of the, both of the hydrogens using deuterium, the overall mass will only be about 11% higher. So most of its properties are pretty similar, but biological systems are very sensitive to even tiny differences. So in large doses, heavy water can disrupt enzymes and stop cell division. Most guidelines say you need to replace about half of the water in your body with heavy water to feel any negative effects. So one glass won't hurt. Argon uh, freezes at about minus 190 degrees centigrade and boils at about minus 187 or something like that. So it has a very narrow liquid phase. So within three degrees, it goes from being a solid to being a gas. Welder William asked, welding wouldn't be possible without argon, but what other uses does it have? Argon is A, extremely inert, B, fairly common, C, fairly cheap and easy to produce, and D, a terrible heat conductor. These characteristics make it perfect for a number of different applications. It's used loads in industrial processes to make sure oxygen or other gases can't get close to the important reactions. This is what makes it so good for welding. It also has some unexpected applications. For example, in fire extinguishers for server rooms and in other places with delicate equipment. It's much harder to freeze argon than it is to freeze CO2, so it's great if you don't want dry ice building up on wires. It's also used as a preservative. Most often this is for food or for wine, but it's also used to preserve important documents, like the American Declaration of Independence. There you see magenta, absolutely beautiful. And that's why you don't see magenta in the, in the spectrum. You don't see magenta in the rainbow because it doesn't have a wavelength. And to finish things off, a bird question. Checky asked, if magenta is not a wavelength of light, does that mean that flamingos have red and blue pigment in their feathers? So first off, flamingos are born gray and they actually turn pink over time because of the way they break down the proteins in their diet. The food they eat, mostly shrimp and algae, contain lots of carotenoids, fat-soluble orange and red pigments. But the carotenoids are locked up with other molecules that make them reflect blue or gray, hence why shrimp and algae don't look bright pink when they're alive. The bird's digestive system then strips the carotenoids and deposits them without their original molecular casings in the feathers, resulting in that bright pink coloration you're familiar with. You can simulate the effect of a flamingo's digestive system with heat. Just put a lobster or some shrimp in a pot and they'll turn bright red when you cook them. That's all for me today. Keep those questions coming and I'll see you next time.